What's up everybody? We're taking a look at the Samsung HMD Odyssey Plus. I recently picked this uh, VR uh, headset up and the reason I did that was because uh, the price dropped from $500 down to $229. And this is um, a VR setup that I hadn't really heard about or heard too much about. I knew of it, knew it was out there, but I had never really looked into it. I'm coming from the Oculus Rift, which I sold a year ago for about $300. So it was nice to get um, you know, a VR uh, rig with, you know, in the $229 price range, which is the price range I was hoping for eventually, and it is better than the Oculus Rift. So all around a nice upgrade and for the, a lot cheaper than what I originally paid for the Rift. So you get two of the hand controls, and these uh, take two AA batteries each. I've heard people mention about needing a Bluetooth adapter, but I haven't uh, needed that. Um, so the... The VR headset itself uses um, HDMI 2.0 and then the USB 3.1. In the middle here you have the user manual and then also a cleaning cloth for the lens. The lens often will get uh, smudged up with your face or hair as you're putting it on so or after you take it off. So you want to keep that wiped up and then the warranty information. And then in the middle here, you have the AA batteries. You get a total of four. Now, taking it out, it's uh, pretty light. In fact, the whole box is very light. It was actually surprisingly light. Um, but yeah, not too heavy. You don't want it too heavy because it'll you know start weighing on your head as it's strapped to your head. Now, when you turn the remote on, it lights up, has these nice lights that get actually pretty bright, and it's, uh, it's kind of a nice effect. It's cool. The controller, it feels it's very plasticky. But it, you know, it, it, it works. Just, you know, I wouldn't drop it. Um, these do have a heavy roll when you put them down, so it's best to actually stand them up or just put them down gently. But uh, standing them up would be the best way to go because they do have a roll and it could potentially fall off your desk if you're not careful. So what you're looking at is uh, 1440 by 1600 resolution in each eye. So it totals for uh, 2880 by 1600. Now your field of view is 110 degrees, and then you have 360 degrees of spatial audio, which is by AKG. Built-in microphone, and then the fabric has this nice, uh, it's nice what they're calling is a cooling fabric to reduce the fogging. I had no fogging when it came with any of this. Now to set it up, it's pretty easy. Uh, just plug it in, no sensors this time, and then you just trace around the room if you plan on doing anything around the room. And uh, yeah, the, the best part is just plugging it in. You don't have to go to any website, download any software. Should recognize it and bring this prompt up here. And install the Windows Mixed Reality Portal. And then you can set up the speech. I'm not going to set up that right now. Now what we're going to do now is check out some of my favorite simulators while using the Odyssey Plus. Now. One thing that was a problem with the Rift was the screen door effect, and they've actually implemented anti-screen door effect technology, is what they're calling it, with uh, this um, setup here. So what the screen door effect basically is, it's when you're looking through the VR and the screen kind of looks like a mesh, and that's just from areas that don't have any light. There's no pixels. So what they did was they took those areas and they filled them with light. So instead of it being dark and black, it, it fills it in with light and uh, that replicates the pixels that are around it. So you lose that effect. And um, after not doing VR and flight simulation for about a year, I would say Aerofly is still definitely the best at this. The user interface is so good. It's so uh, smooth and um, and also, when you're just recording videos, it's nice that you get to see the native size. It fills the screen and it looks good. The other simulators, for the most part, you only get that one lens vision that's kind of like filming uh, with a cell phone um, portrait and then watching it landscape. It's like that. But Aerofly actually fills the screen. The uh, visuals look so great. Everything is smooth. Frame rate is great. And I. I took it on some different um, trips here. This is obviously uh, Innsbruck we're flying into, and that was uh, really incredible. I didn't have this last time with the Rift. I didn't have this uh, scenery. Took out an F-18 and then flew it around the Grand Canyon, and this was a lot of fun too to really get in here with these mountains. Again, Aerofly has great looking mountains and, and scenery. 
and yeah, very, very easy. Off I'm using this off of Steam, and what I found to use with Steam and the Mixed Reality Portal is open the Mixed Reality Portal first, and then open Steam, and all your your Sims should run. I have a uh, this running off of your Aerofly uh, X Plane 11, and then IL2, and uh, those all have, have been working great. We're gonna go into each one, but I just want to show you some of the fun I had here with this and it definitely makes the landings a lot easier and like i said uh, panning around is a is a lot smoother and uh the hand controls work too and we'll also get into that in a moment with x plane 11 but here's a landing in the f-18 around the key west area always makes for better landings for uh well i know why with with using this just your your fuel of view is is so much better and in some cases you can actually really feel the plane now if you really want to freak out your friends or family members uh, and you have Aerofly FS2 get in a helicopter and go to downtown LA and start out on one of these helipads and try to land on it you if you haven't felt what it feels like in your stomach with uh, with the flying yet this will do it especially when you you almost get on the pad there's a few times I actually went completely backwards and started to drop and just the, the feeling of going backwards and you're way above all these buildings. Just it, it, it's really a, a, a trippy thing, and uh, definitely check that out. So, you know, you could even you can just have your your friend or whatever put on the VR set, and then you can fly it for them because you can see Aerofly still on the screen. So you know, in case they don't know what they're doing, you can just you know kind of show them a, a flight. And uh, here it is at night, just doing an approach into Miami, just checking it out for a minute. But uh, yeah, like I said, I think Aerofly still is in the number one spot for the overall VR experience, uh, even with the Odyssey Plus. So checking out X-Plane 11, I wanted to hop into Zebo and check out the hand controls. Now, X-Plane 11 is probably the best with the hand controls as far as the functionality. So we're just doing a start up here. We just got the APU on, the APU bleed, and we're putting the packs on. We're just doing our regular flows. But these work really good with the switches. You, you don't have to actually be up on the switch. You can kind of... You can be away from it too, and you just pull the trigger, and this little beam comes out of the out of the the hand control, and it lets you to turn the knobs and stuff. And you actually have to twist with it as well. Um, one difference was I was really able to get in here and program the FMC coming from the Oculus Rift with the sensors. Uh, it would get weird if you put your head down and you try to lean into something. Sometimes it would cut off the movement and just kind of freeze until you move your your head back into where the sensors are. But with uh, with the Odyssey Plus, you're not dealing with sensors because they're on the actual the VR headset itself. So as long as you give yourself enough room to not bump into your desk or anything, you can really lean in and actually mess around with with any panel you need to. And I also tried it out in the, in the Cessna 172 here. And we're just uh, taxiing around, looking around, and then we're about to do a takeoff. And... Yeah, everything worked good in the Cessna with the hand controls as far as uh, operating the mixture, the throttle, the buttons, the switches. Everything worked good. So we'll just do this quick rollout here. Same thing if you're using the Steam version. As I said, just uh, launch the uh, Mixed Reality Portal first and then launch Steam and everything should run fine. X-Plane is pretty good in VR. Um, I have X-Camera 2, so that it helps with moving the camera around, uh, but it's uh, a little clunkier, but, but the hand controls are pretty nice. They've actually uh, really uh, polished up VR in X-Plane 11, it looks like. Remember before, it didn't do it natively. You had to get an extra program to run uh, VR in X-Plane, but it's looking good now. And uh, yeah, I can easily see doing a full flight in the Zebo with the hand controls, especially now that you can have charts in the tablet. You can operate the pushback with the tablet as well and load all the fuel and, and payload. So that, that'll make for a very easy time with VR. Next, I wanted to check out DCS World. I was kind of wondering how this was going to work because, uh, you know, I needed a, you know, I wasn't sure if, if it was just going to run as soon as I turned on DCS. Turned on DCS, and sure enough, uh, the headset knew what to do. It started running DCS in there, and uh, it's just fun to get on the carrier deck here and look around on the planes. Um, I was easily able to fly next to other aircraft and, and track them and, and, and shoot people down 
easy to track everybody. Like I said, it's a, it's a lot smoother. You know, I don't really, I wasn't losing too many frames or anything. Um, now this is a, another example of where you only get the one lens view. So I actually have to stretch this into the, uh, the monitor here. So this is not the real resolution of, um, of the VR. It's, it's often a challenge to record VR because of things like this. Uh, so this is one lens that's stretched to 1080p. So that's why it's, uh, it's not as good, but the resolution inside the, um, the Odyssey is, is uh, much better than what you're seeing here. This is, and then Il2 is another example of having to do that with the uh, screen. But again, same thing, uh, just hopped in there and had no problem. The uh, interface is great. Uh, just flew around uh, shooting people down and, and yeah, this, so just overall this VR set, I think it's really worth it uh, for flight simulation, for anything, for any racing game, any, anything really for uh, $229. It's uh, definitely an upgrade over the $400 Oculus Rift that uh, was the previous generation. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, I think I've got my money's worth here. I was waiting for this type of price range, this $200 range, and to have it for uh, $229 is, is just really great. Uh, b and I noticed, has recently matched the Samsung price, so you could probably get it on there or get it on the Samsung website itself. Uh, Best Buy also does price matching. A lot of stores do, so if your store is uh, carrying it for $500, you could probably try to price match for the uh, $229. But uh, yeah, just a, a very simple box, simple unboxing, simple, um, just a simple headset. That's that's really what uh, the biggest takeaway from here is it's, it's just simple, easy to use. Uh, fairly comfortable. Like I said, it's got the cooling fabric, so you're not sweating. Uh, that can happen, you know. Uh, but yeah, comfortable uh, headset, and I'm looking forward to using this uh, for a long time with uh, flight simulation. So, all right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this. Uh, hope this uh, helped you out in deciding if you want to get this one. You guys take care. I'll see you next time.